Oh, fuck. Whoa. <laughs> Welcome to the Simple Minds Podcast, where we look to empower and encourage real conversation amongst men everywhere by unpacking topics on self-help, philosophy, and business. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the Simple Minds Podcast. My name is Justin, and I'm going to be your host today. I am joined by usual uh, crew i have matt j hannam hello jacob moffat hey justin the prophet the prof and swaggy c conrad good day swag master we're missing a uh, resident hipster uh hey <laughs> no hipster yeah hippie. 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 hippie say hi not hipster no he's not right hipster hi i don't know does he I'm not sure what um, Hato hey? signature is. Ahoy, ahoy, ahoy. ahoy. Oh, oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> ahoy. He says, hey, hey. Ned Flanders. Hey, hey. Ahoy, ahoy. <laughs> Today, lads, we are drinking. We've got a bit of a theme over the last couple. Um, uh, probably not the last couple, just you today. Sure? Yeah. W- WA theme today. We've got some jerky, some uh, jerks, jerky, thanks to Conrad. I didn't bring that. Can't take the credit. That's, that's, that's some of the best jerky you'll ever eat. It's, it's best served with road trips. Shut up. We are we are going on a road trip today. We're going on a bit of a journey, um, and I have Lime Burners uh, single malt whiskey from Margaret River. Um, went to their distillery uh, not too long ago. Tried I out. I thought they're from Albany. Nope, Margs. And um, it's a peated uh, whiskey. Uh, it's apparently one of their it's Albany. Of web. Albany. Yeah, I was like, hang on, Conrad's right. Yeah. I was there last year. <laughs> okay, my bad. It's from Albany. They have a... Or Albany. Uh, where were you? Margaret River. This is where I got it from. The bottle they might shop? Have a- no. <laughs> it's from the... Uh, they've got a... Um, bottle shop? Thing there. No, it's not a bottle shop. You do a gin there as well. They do like masterclasses and all sorts um, in the heart of Margaret River. Anyway, that's where I got it from. My bad. They're from Albany. Uh, it's good. Anyway, moving on. Uh, it's it's, ob- it's the picture. It's very light for a peated single malt. Very yeah. light. I've got to make it go further. What does peated mean? It's, it's had peat on it. It's uh, <laughs> smell it. It's on peat. If you smell it, it's got a real smoky uh, kind of smell and flavour. Smells like varnish. <laughs> Smells like varnish. Uh, sure. Lime right, is one of the best um, scotches coming out of Australia at the moment. They are. Nice. Nice. Today, we are going to be the title of oh, this delicious. podcast is Why Nobody is Coming to Save You. So, lads, what I want to talk about today is <laughs> – never mind, <laughs> moving on um, – this concept of, of how we're always seeking the, the silver bullet um, and generally the area of your life where you are seeking a silver bullet is probably something that you're in denial with. Um, it, it's shown up a lot with myself uh, lately. Uh, all of us probably have a few examples of this over our, our lives to, to date. Um, I don't. Of course. <laughs> and he prefers copper or <laughs> lead or tin. One of the others. Um, and like the, the examples of, I guess, uh, looking for the silver bullet is, you know, seeking that get rich scheme, uh, getting that seven day uh, workout that will lose, lose fat, seven steps uh, to this. We're addicted to it. Um, it's something that we always seek. It's a, every industry is guilty leveraging it, um, taking advantage of people because we're always looking for the shortest path. And the funny thing is, is that Ironically, we know that there is no short path, yet we always want to try to convince ourselves that there is, that there's a shortcut. There's a shortcut to yeah, fat loss, to wisdom, to wealth, to, to all of this, and we all like to ignore the fundamentals. Um, however, what I've come to learn recently is that when you're, it's, it's really easy to see 
other people seeking the silver bullet, but it's always a massive struggle to see yourself when you're in those those moments. And I think um, the biggest moment for me was I have shared with this recently. I set up uh, an advisory board and um, we were in a couple of the early ones and uh, – you know, I do the we do these back to back with a with another business, and the funny thing was is that in the first part of my for, business, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be respectful. Anyway, Matt and I sit on each other's advisory board. I we do them back to back. We mine goes first, um, and there's a bunch of problems and blah blah blah, and then Matt goes second. The funny thing was was that in the meeting immediately after. I'm like to Matt, hey, you've got this, this, and this. And then it's like, oh, that's all the same problems that I have. Um, and yet <laughs> I didn't want to acknowledge them. They were so easy for me to see Matt's issues, even though they were identical to, to my issues. And I think this is quite, it's obviously quite common. And we don't like to acknowledge our issues, our darkness, our shadows, whatever word we want to, to use. And generally when you're seeking a silver bullet, that is a massive uh, headlight that this is an area of your life you need to seek. So if you're looking for financial, a quick quick buck to get into financial success, you're clearly not wanting to acknowledge the real burden of your finances, maybe how fucked up they are, how much you're in debt you are. If you are looking for a quick fix to losing weight, well, clearly you don't want to acknowledge that you're unhappy with your body shape or you're unhappy with like um, your health or, or whatever uh, that may be. And so what I wanted to, uh, I guess, bring to the table today is share a couple of those experiences to help anyone who's listening take stock of maybe, oh, I am looking, I seem to be attracted to that silver bullet over there. Maybe I just need to take a moment, acknowledge where I am and then take the small steps moving forward. Because if you don't acknowledge it and you keep seeking the silver bullets, you're going to get deeper and deeper into either a negative or um, uh, it's going to catastrophically blow up at some point. Um, a couple other examples are in a business sense, looking to business coaches or looking to someone who you think is going to save you. Um, and the concept of uh, the title of this episode is that nobody is coming. No one is going to come and save you. No one is going to fix it for you. You have to take responsibility and, and, and let go. Um, we've talked about this on a few episodes uh, recently. Um, it's been a bit of a common theme, probably, um, because it's probably showing up in a, you know, a few of our, our lives. Um, so, lads, let's open it up. Um, I want to hear some experiences where you've were looking for the silver bullet. After a while, you realise that actually you just need to take responsibility and sort it, sort it out. Um, Jacob had an old episode on this, <laughs> so we won't start there. Uh, Matt, we just talked about that little example. Do you have another example or is or do you want to build off uh, what we talked about? Yeah, look, 100%. Um, the thing that came to mind, which is a book that a few of us have been reading lately, is David Dieter and The, the Way of a Superior Man. And the comment that was made... Was Justin Bieber. <laughs> Justin David Bieber did. Very different Dieter. author. <laughs> He's... Um, he, he authors songs of the pop variety. Well, actually, I he just read it though. He doesn't author the way it. of the inferior man. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> <laughs> ouch! Actually, on that, Bieber just recently um, exposed some of the challenges that he went through, and was were extremely vulnerable on social media. It was actually, um, it's actually interesting. So, He's growing up, um, yeah, it's becoming a superior. That man. was he thirty-two years old. So, in uh, his a thousand true fans, is one of one of them is Justin. That's right, <laughs> Justin Bieber born. So. <laughs> In The Way of a Superior Man, he talks about living just beyond that edge. Um, and one thing that comes to mind, um, and what he, what he says is basically we, we either don't do the work or we throw ourselves into these extreme um, missions or outcomes to, to get there. So rather than just you know, the, the most difficult challenge and discipline to do and achieve is to live just beyond that edge and to be just taking the correct, appropriate steps towards the goal you want to achieve. We... We do nothing, 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 flash 60-day crazy workout or five-day fast and then um, want to maintain those sustained results. That doesn't 
you know, whilst that provides some form of outcome, it's not lasting change. And that's the um, the biggest challenge. Um, as far as examples, God, what, I mean, what area haven't I done it in? <laughs> I mean, uh, countless different ways in business. Um, and a couple of great examples would be, it's actually something you touched on um, earlier, Jacob, in our conversation, hiring people. Hiring the wrong people, mm, um, or, or not that they're the wrong people, but it's because you're hiring because you don't want to do something, yeah. or you're hiring um, well in advance of when you know you should, thinking that they might short circuit the next level of outcome for you, but all you're doing is going backwards. And the, the big one here is business coaching, and I've done this as well as you, and you mentioned that example, but we... All of us it, in this it, room. All of us in this room have done it, but you, you pass on... You've got to be very, very careful not to pass on a level of any any level of responsibility onto them because they're not going to catch it. It's not what they're there for, but it's very easy to go, hey, I'm paying you a few bucks. I expect you to help me do this and get there. You've got to do all the work. But no, look, hiring people is a great example of that. Um, trying to – look, I, I've made several attempts at acquiring other businesses and some of them have really just been a impatience. You know, I could have achieved it and, and will achieve it anyway. Um, it's it, it might be worth it to speed up the process or it might not be worth it to speed up the process. I've certainly done it in um, you know, health and, and fitness arenas where I've gone an absolute binge sort of workout see, um, things or even diet-related, not, not diets per se, but like a fairly extreme fast or um, take the diet to an extreme level that it's not sustainable for a long period of time. I've, I've done it everywhere. Like and I think it's... It's the human condition, I think, to want to do it quickly. How, how have you um, uh, nowadays, how are you approaching and acknowledging when you are seeking kind of the, the silver bullet? Are you going think about things a little bit differently recently? Well, I actually, I'll pull the, um, Richard Branson is someone who we probably don't really talk about very often at all. Um, and one of his big sort of key points is managing the downside. And in, in any of these areas, I just make sure I protect the bottom. So if a great business opportunity comes along, I can give it some time, but I just make sure it's not going like to hollow me out in the bottom. And if a great um, – same thing goes with maybe a, a diet or another regime or something that goes on, whereas in the past I've taken more extreme risks that could, could lead to more extreme failure, and I have had that. And certainly financially I've had that. I've taken on – look, I've been unconditional on – uh, multi-million dollar property transactions without knowing where the money was going to come from. I, I've pulled through and done those deals, but at the time, I mean, the, the level of risk, the level of reward was high, but the level of risk was unnecessarily high. And if I roll back to David Deed, I, sh I needed I needed not be in that position. I could have easily just been just extending myself a little bit past where I was comfortable and, and not putting myself under undue significant distress a big part of that comes down to consistent application of consistent action is we all know if you give yourself a three month deadline to lose weight as a simple example, and then you sit on it and you procrastinate, you don't take action. And then with a month to go, you go, oh, oh shit, I've got to lose 10 kilos. That's when you start making huge changes. You start doing things to kind of potentially compromise your health to achieve that goal in too short a period when if you'd consistently applied action over that time, you'd get that outcome. And I know the same thing I find with business is that you know that in three months time, a big bill's due or a big thing's going to happen. And you just kind of go, well, things are comfortable. They're going to be fine. And then like two, three weeks before that bill's due, you go, oh goodness, I've got to make these sales. I've got to cut these staff. I've got to do all these drastic things now. And it's just those periods of comfort and then just madness, and you can, and Justin, you've experienced it recently. Smoothing that out just makes life so much better. Yeah, the consistency, but how do we, how do you fully acknowledge? I think it's fascinating that when the silver bullet, you're seeking it, you don't take the appropriate action over a period of time, and then something explodes, and that's what require. That's what then leads us to wake up. Um, why do we fail to see um, these these things? That's Parkinson's law, isn't it? A task will expand to take the space you give it. 
if you give yourself three months for a project, you, you'll wait until the very last second and you do it. If you give yourself a week, you'll still wait till the very last moment and do it. So I know um, certain people, I think it's... Um, That's Parkinson's law. Then Murphy kicks in and he screws you over at the end. Yeah. <laughs> but who's the... Parkinson. Grant 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 uh, principal. Grant Carter. Grant, Grant Carter Carter comes to the table. <laughs> For the only 20% of the time you're going to be successful anyway. Yeah. Uncle G. Is it Peter Thiel that talks about trying to achieve your several year goals within a several months? 10X! Yeah, like... We've, we've talked about this before is by achieving your 10-year goal in 12 months, for example, all you've got to do is put that deadline on it and you'll work 10 times as hard to make it happen. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily always... Um, you could do that on a silver bullet and not actually go anywhere. What, what are, uh, what's a recent example of uh, where you were seeking for a quick fix over the last couple of years that um, you realised, yeah, that that wasn't the way that you should have gone oh, about it? For me, it. sales was a huge one is that delivering like teaching classes delivering our like like um fulfilling our product is something that i'm quite comfortable doing but sales and picking up the phone and calling people and having those conversations is something i've always felt really uncomfortable with especially kind of picking up the phone and calling people so we had someone within our team who had a sales experience who'd worked at gyms who said i can pick up the phone and kind of um, that's my thing i love doing that I mean, awesome. Here's someone who can do, who's comfortable and thrives in doing something that I'm not comfortable doing myself. I'm going to put them in a position to be responsible for our sales systems, for developing a sales team. The, they were, they were t- talking a big story about how they can create all this value and do this, this and this. And I was like, perfect. I put them in a position, said, here you go, run with it. But like we were discussing before, Conrad, it's not something I'd done before myself. It's not something I had any idea about what the KPIs or the expectations of that role were. I just gave them full freedom and autonomy to do this thing. And the outcomes and the actions didn't match the expectations or the kind of the initial um, story that was told. And it took me probably nine months to realize we've been paying a lot of money each week for something that we really weren't getting a lot out of. Um, and we've done the, we've done the calculations here about what, um, what, how much a mistake will impact you towards the, the vision you have for your future. But for us simply in the last say 12 months, that probably 60, 70 K that went out is how is more than how far behind we are in rent. Like if I hadn't, if I'd taken that responsibility on myself, not tried to go, well, someone else will solve that problem. If I'd been responsible, I'd been a bit more courageous and kind of gone, well, I'm going to do this. This is what the business requires. This is the service I'm going to provide. And I'm going to do this sales thing myself, which I'm now doing and it has been successful. If I'd done that 12 months ago, we wouldn't be behind on rent. We wouldn't have had to take on additional debt, and we've been in a much better position now. Yeah, well, that's like what you talked about, Matt. Like we, you go to hire a salesperson because you either can't be bothered, you're uncomfortable with it, you don't like it, and you think they're going to solve all your your. I've your, done that like pro- five times. Bro, your problems. I did it in the last twelve months. <laughs> I did it again. I, even though I knew better, I did it again and dropped twenty grand on, on no outcome. Yeah. <laughs> so how 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 do you? Before we go there, Conrad, give me a couple examples of uh, where you've seeked uh, the silver bullet and um, it was clearly not going to give you the the result or outcome that you thought no, it would. It hasn't, mate. I mean, I've, I've, I've done – I mean, I can't say I've done it too badly in business. Uh, so some way you put a business around me and I've become uber responsible. Um, but in my personal life, I've taken plenty of risks and, and short, sought you – know, um, wealth really quickly by punting on different things. I say punting, I mean you know, speculating versus investing. So you know, dodgy stocks, um, that's that sucked me in for a fair whack uh, from different stages. I think I lost about 100000 on one single stock trade back in nine, 2009. Um, so, yeah, I mean, business, but, I don't, yeah, fortunately, with some structure, I, I, I tend to become accountable and responsible in business. And so I don't – I haven't actually – chase too many silver bullets in business 
So you mentioned just something there which I want to start to touch on. You use the word structure and that has um, really shown up for myself uh, lately and a lot of that's come from some of the conversations you and I have, have had. Do you think structure is one of the key fundamentals to mitigate seeking silver bullets? Yeah. Um, structure, structure and order. Um uh, are two of the things I think, and and it's probably come from a conversation with the, with Martin, sleep doctor Martin. You know, I mean, the work that he's been doing on himself, he's managed to simplify it down to 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 neutralize chaos using order and structure, and, and it's a theme that's shown up in in things such as the Bible, things such as um, nursery uh, fables and stories, and whenever you overlay a structure on something, it tends to to create order. So business, life, whatever, whatever the chaos, what is the structure you need to overlay? Weight, if you've got a weight problem or a health problem, then you've got the, the structure to overlay, be it a diet or be it exercise or a combination of both. Um, and the structures are all very well known. It's just that we tend to think that we're so goddamn unique that whatever Johnny Rocket's done is not going to work for me. And so we'll zig and then we'll zag well, and we're then we'll zig. We're not patient either, right? We're not patient to wait for those little small... Improvements in whatever it is. No, but man, wanna, fucking, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I don't. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I think the businesses that do it best, or the people that do it best, are those that don't buy into that impatient um, offering and just like your, like Conrad, your financial services isn't about let's take the highest risk speculative trades. It's just let's just put the financial fundamentals in place and build wealth over time. Matt, yours is similar. It's about putting out content daily, serving your community, and then letting those results kind of grow over time. Justin, it's probably the same for you. I don't know the specifics of the industry, but it's... I mean, everything's the, the, it's the same. It's all incremental. It's all incremental. The challenge yeah. is is, to, is doing the march and staying connected um, in the march rather than doing a series of sprints. Sprints are highly, obviously, uh, almost lucrative, but then you have the, the massive valleys and um through my experience it's had like yeah like as you said we all know these things but generally it takes a big moment to kind of slap you in the face or punch you in the balls to go fuck i need to sort this this out um top line top line vanity bottom line sanity and you and you touched on it right that you now manage you now manage to bottom line um and i suppose it's something you probably haven't done enough of in one in in really starting to do it yeah you know, it, yeah, because it's, it's funny how it takes something serious. Like, and we've talked about this before of whether you need to go through the experience to actually learn it. And um, I, I like the kind of the concept of that things are going to keep showing up until you, you learn the, the lesson. And I found that you need a pretty big whack <laughs> Sometimes. Oh, the price tag goes up. <laughs> yeah. And it's not always money. Money's <laughs> no. the cheapest. I say to people, money's the cheapest uh, repercussion of, a, of, a, of an unlearned lesson. Time is much more uh, valuable, especially the the it's cheap in terms of money as well. Because often a money problem was one of the greatest causes of relationship problems as well, right? Yeah. So it's um it a financial problem is if it was just isolated to the financial problem that'd be one thing, but it does a lot more to you. But we all stop at finance because I mean, if 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 we're all honest, we'll all distill the issue down to money, okay? But that's the glass floor. <laughs> And one of the biggest it's not money. Yeah. It's not money. The root cause of most people's issues go way beyond money. Yeah. And often these silver bullets are playing with one of those two levers. I know in the initial days, a lot of the silver bullets I was pursuing for, for our business was I will buy back some of my own time by paying money to people to play roles, to do things that I either don't want to or don't feel I should do myself or people are telling me, Oh no! You've got to build your team for the role for the future you want to have. So I was trading a lot of time for money, and too much. We got ourselves into debt, and now I'm trading a hell of a lot of my own time to do all these things I should have done in the first place to save money. And that'll take quite a long time to reverse that and dig myself out of the hole. And then I've got to balance that with family and making sure I'm taking time. If I'm taking all this time away from family, it's going to have a benefit in the end. When and it's it's all you got, yeah, that's your responsibility. 
yeah, and I'm taking that on and, and my family understands that and they respect the time I'm putting in knowing that the mistakes I've made are things that I'm kind of earning, are owning and kind of taking on. And like you said, Justin, like no one's going to save you. You've just got to take that responsibility and own it and go, well, I've made these mistakes. I'm now fully responsible for everything that happens. Myself, my employees, the service I'm providing to the to our audience and and own that. Yeah, well, I think it's you got to start with um, looking inwards at the issue and why it's an issue. If money is the current issue, then go one like layer. But, then, and but this is what I'm willing to. to this what I'm saying is not the glass floor, right? Yeah. Because it all comes down to self worth and self love. Yeah, that's what you got to get to. Mm. And you got to get to why are you doing that? You know, why is that behaviour? Why is that uh, action being taken? Right? You know. Hormones trigger emotions, emotions trigger actions, actions trigger outcomes. Figure out why um, that's happening. And when you can figure out why, then you can start to re-peg the route out. Um, and most people don't go deep enough, therefore they, they don't start the journey from the right spot and it will show up again because they haven't gone and haven't pulled the weed from the root, they've pulled it from the surface. Sometimes it's a product of the, the, product of the culture you're a part of as well. As when I first got into business, I was very attracted to and excited by the startup culture and this idea like like things like Facebook and all these apps is you run at a loss for a long time until you then reverse it and monetize it. And I just thought that was naturally how businesses ran. Like it was okay to go into debt, to run at a loss, to accrue quite a bill and eventually things will turn themselves around. So that's the culture and the, the, the learnings I was taking on at the time. And it's only now that I'm realizing that, like, yes, that serves some purposes and some businesses, but I could have done it differently and taking on debt and kind of almost wearing that like a badge of honor, your run, your the amount of cash, your cash well, flow burn. You've got to be like careful that. of where you're getting the, the advice from and what the silver bullets you're seeking are trying oh, to tell 100%. you. And if you haven't got your worth and all your other ducks in order, you're going to take that on and make some pretty serious mistakes. Because like, um, if you haven't changed the... the the eyes. What, what's that? What um, we talked about that um, that Errol Gerson guy. He talks about um, if you change the way you look at something, um, the way the things what, you look at change. Yeah, the things you look at change. And if you haven't given yourself a set of filters to look at the situation differently, then you're not going to see it differently for long enough. Because we all know that everything's out, an output of behaviour, and we all know changing behaviour in the modern world, given how distracted we are, is almost near and fucking possible. I think the other challenge as well is that we get bombarded and we're we're wanting to get to the outcome faster. Lack of patience is what you talk about, Matt, and and continuing to practice enjoying the journey along the way. I know it's cliche and we've talked about it, but it's 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 you've got to what I've come to learn um, particularly is trying to sit with the the end result, but being grateful and happy regardless in this moment in time, even you're not where you expected or wanted to be or what everything looks like. Um, and because that's the other reason we're probably seeking the silver bullet. We want to be somewhere or be something or have something that um, we currently don't have. Our expectations of that are not aligning to our current you know, and there's nothing state. wrong with that. There is nothing. Like I said, you've got to keep the end result in mind. There's nothing yep. wrong with having a dream. There's nothing wrong with having an end point. But it becomes wrong when you're not prepared to do the work that you're being asked to do. Well, mm. that's the problem because if it works, right, and let's say, Jacob, all of a sudden something magically popped, money was flowing in, you quickly built seven gyms around the country and you were flying along, you know, JB, maybe something the same. At one point you wanted to – I mean, you've already got an office in Perth, an office in Sydney – You wanted to go to New York, you wanted to go global, you wanted to do all this. You know, I've had similar aspirations and I've even put, you know, large like several hundreds of thousands of dollars into um, property projects. I've taken significant risk there. The challenge with all of that is if – it and same with your 100K stock (laughs) they're talking about, Conrad. If it worked, you still have – It wasn't just one, it was a few of the stupid ones. Yeah. (laughs) But but if it's – if it worked – you would you you would still just relay the same problems, and you'd probably ten x that problem next time. So the the problem is you haven't learnt those lessons. You've got to earn it, and you need to flow through. So every every or all my major failures have have resulted in the the best possible outcomes because it, it's made me pivot and make adjustments in my daily disciplines, finance and and otherwise as well. But 
that's that's the problem because if it had a popped, if it had a worked, like imagine you weren't ready for it. You weren't ready for it. Mm. And if so, if you threw that same like your car or your original level of or lack of discipline, Jacob, for example, in how you're running your business, imagine if you all of a sudden had seven of those. Jeez, you know, don't even go seven. Just go two. Well, even two. <laughs> but imagine if you did. Like, how quickly would that completely combust? That seventy thousand like, dollar problem turns into one forty. Yeah. Plus. Whatever the on cost, in, yeah, things, quickly yeah, it amplifies very quickly. It's yeah. compounding in the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's absolutely yeah, hundred percent. And it's interesting and like sitting with the, the end result, and it's kind of like if you'd achieved those things, what would have it looked like on the rocky foundations that that you had? And generally, for myself, it was that I didn't want to honor those truths because I had success in other areas, but clearly failures in others. And it was a self-worth piece. I felt like a failure if I acknowledged them. Um, and I didn't want to face the hard truths that, and you kind of, you almost, uh, the, the mind is a powerful thing in that you just, you really ignore it. Like it's amazing how much you go into denial in ignoring these areas that you shouldn't be um, um, looking at, and they just continue to brew into, a, 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 you know, a bigger cancer is not the right word, but a sickness that just kind of sits there until it bubbles up to a point, and just like, you know, a fist just comes out of it and and knocks you yeah. and tumor. Um, cancer tumor tumor um, disease. What's it about? Of a lot of these silver bullets are about avoiding the suffering and the hard work yeah. that's required. And we don't, have, we don't have the resilience, man. You know, I mean, I feel sorry for that. The the, the generation you guys are of, uh, including you, <laughs> because you guys are soft. It's true. Like the underbelly, man. We're we're like um like not, not you not you three, right? I mean, I know, but I'm talking about your generation. Well, yeah. we're like um, it's we're not. I'm guilty and sometimes I'm def not sometimes I'm guilty of being lazy and also not doing the work as well. Um, and it's like, you know, you get three months in and people are willing to, to give up or like it's, it's too hard. And then this, we expect to get those results and that, that end results. And, um, and there's also an elements of like, I think a lot of people don't, uh, experience gratitude for the work that they they do as well, um, and for and, the failures as well, and for the failures and and I think it gets worse and worse as you get older if you don't acknowledge these things, um, and it becomes harder. I <coughs> I, I assume it's because um, also the ego as well gets gets involved, and people don't want to look like failures, and so they hang on for like maybe some people are hanging on for five ten years onto things and longer. And probably well, do, you, do you want to know a really prime example of that right now? Is especially in uh, there's a lot of markets, a lot of Western markets in particular around the world right now that are struggling, and there's there's radical technological change. There is un, an ungodly amount of businesses, small businesses, that really should have shut their doors at least a couple of years ago, at least if not longer, and they're burning all the net wealth that they have created for God knows how long. and they, they don't want to be pass. seen as a failure. Well, because they don't yeah. want to be seen as a failure. They don't know what to do tomorrow because they don't have the energy to kickstart and do something again. And all they can do is float this float this kite down until it lands in the in the sea somewhere and, and shut the thing down. That's so, true. Blockbuster would have been a great example of that. They had just who built an empire over decades and rode that kind of wave and then – Disruption came along, technology came along, and they were the ego was too big to go. Oh, the digital is not going to be a problem. Netflix isn't going to be a problem. And then a few years later, gone. Yeah, that's that. That's super interesting, particularly on a small business level. There would be millions of businesses um, out there that would be kind of in in that state. And I'm I'm around a, a few people who are probably in a similar um, state as well. Um, Conrad, you would you would have a lot of exposure to people through the financial um, spaces that you do, and surely this would be a super common thing that that, that comes up. Where's the first steps that you start with um, with people to help them maybe see the the darknesses that they don't want to see or or acknowledge? What's kind of the advice you give? The easiest place to look at it straight away is how they spend their money. Um, so we 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 do jack uh, jack into their. Um, their cash flow spending, and and straight away you can start to see some of the behaviours and some of the uh, eccentricities that the clients have. Um, but yeah, because again, how they spend their money is a direct parallel 
to to their internal worth system. Explain. Can you give us a little bit more? Um, oh, I came from a meeting today where one of my clients who's in their seventies um, has enough money in their super to pay out their their mortgage, um, which is well, I think within twenty k, which is reasonable. I mean, she's she's lived on her own for a while, so she's done a fairly good job. Um, but she has a rather eccentric spending pattern, and one of them is she's got a cat and she leaves the house heating on to to keep the house warm for the cat, the whole entire house. And like I just said to you, she's she's not going to be able to pay a mortgage out, and she's seventy odd years of age, and um, and on the last reign of a of a working period, um, the power bill was nine hundred nine hundred dollars. Now, put that in context, I'm a single person. My power bill is north of 100 to around 120. When it's above 100, I'm scared. <laughs> you don't want my power bill. No, but, but, <laughs> but, but what is it? My, my last one? Yeah. Uh, 550. Okay. Well, we're my, talking about- my, our old, my old property was like almost double that. And it was really, really. Yeah, but you got three kids. Sure. Two, two kids. House is running 20, yeah. well, the house is running 24 7. Well, her house is for a cat. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this person's about to put themselves into almost friggin', you know, financial ruin for the sake of keeping the house warm for their cat. Tell me that that's not a behavioural problem. And that's okay for her until we pull her up on it. Yeah, because, again, she's got into a situation of, you know, the, the, the self-worth thing in there is that she values a cat higher than her own, her own self. So, yeah, that's, that's what we get to. And then where do you go from like challenge the behavior? We can't change the behavior. We can yeah. challenge the behavior, and we can show her what issues that are, uh, she's going to have to navigate. Like any coach, right? I can't change the behavior of my athletes. I can't change the behavior of my clients. I can't change your behaviors. I can only I can only help you navigate it by what I know, um, and that's all we can do is, is try to bring the truth back in front. You know, the delusion that they're they're looking at. Yeah, and well, the one thing that you can control. And the thing I tell our, our clients all the time is you can choose your suffering. From a basketball perspective, you can put in the hard work during preseason, during training. You can run yourself as hard as you can and choose that suffering in that session and then enjoy the reward later. Or you can not put in the work, lose the final or not even make it to the finals and have the suffering of not having achieved what you could have done. Regardless, the suffering is unavoidable. You just get to choose what form it takes. I think, um, or not choose, or not choose, which means choose. you get you the default get number happens, two. Yeah. yeah, I think um, a, a big thing. If I can, if I share my my experience was, you know, when I got smacked in the the face, was the realization of of the level of responsibility. Like you have ultimate responsibility, but where, and I think we touched on this on the last episode, is that. If you don't take ultimate responsibility, what impacts that has to others? And when you're a business owner, if you're a family member, uh, is connecting that responsibility to others. Um, and that, for me, was a massive wake-up call to realize that if I don't create the structures, if I don't take the required action step-by-step, step, um, this and that, there is massive negative impacts that ricochet outwards. Um, and so, like acknowledging that if I don't fix these things and I'm not going to be able to serve these people or do this or I have a responsibility uh, first off of yourself and because if you don't look after yourself, the aeroplane theory, then you're going to let other people down, whether that's your kids, whether that's your 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 mum, your your spouse or, or whatever, uh, your team, your team. Um, if you don't manage your finances and take responsibility, then the people closest to you potentially are going to suffer just as much. The other thing is that if you are suffering um, because you don't want to deal with your finances, you're impacting those other people regardless, subconsciously, whether you know it. Energetically. Like, energetically, the way that you show up. The funny thing was that we've really got on top of our finances in the last few months and Matt and I have had a couple convos and even uh, probably with Conrad of like the mental freedom that you have from sorting out your finances, you can't even like really describe it and quant quantify it. I know not everything's, you know, people say, oh, it's not all about money, but it's bullshit. If you can get the basis and the bottom that you talked about, 
You sit down, identify what your bottoms are for money. You get them sorted. The psychological freedom that you have is just paramount. Like you can go up, you can go up to so much more once that's sorted. Fuck, like and having no. We talk about like in the last episode having no expectations of people, no judgments. When you've got your own shit sorted, it becomes so much easier to to do that. And it's kind of like flipping the script. Um, and I remember, Conrad, you were sharing, you got a bit of a challenge. I don't know if your challenge is still going around the the, the, the cardio piece, um, you know, and... and no, I, I, I'll do it. I mean, I, I now created the space to do it in. Yeah, and like you were mentioning about creating a structure which was around serving others to help you keep accountable um, to it. And I think the same is, um, you I know... Just, I just identified all the fat people in my life and just included them on my journey. <laughs> that was my structure. It's real simple. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, you know, and I think it's hard to, uh, yeah, it's hard to acknowledge when you're, you're in the, the moments. But um, if, you, if you can really face it and have just be open and share with the people first closest with you, that that's what you're going through. Um, that's also going to be the first step to hold the hand of facing your darkness. And people around you will respect it more um, and – does all lead back to self worth and self love? Generally, we don't want to share those things because we want we don't want to look like the failure. We don't look like we stuffed up. Our ego stops us from sharing and being um, vulnerable. We put the armor up. We put the mask up. And like at the end of the day, no one gives a shit because if you keep that mask up, I think it was at breakfast a few few weeks ago. Um, one of our guests was like, just hold the glass of water out for a period of time and just think how heavy. Like, how heavy do you think that glass is? And you keep holding it. You keep holding it. And after a minute, it gets pretty fucking heavy. After two minutes, even heavier. After five minutes, you probably can't hold it anymore. And that's the same with holding onto these things that you're in denial with. They get heavier and heavier and heavier. Um, and you just need to face them. Like, there's, there's people in my life that are looking for the silver bullet. They go after bullet after bullet after bullet and keep wondering like why they're in a shitty situation. Um, the the lack of, uh, I, I guess, taking ultimate responsibility compounded with the lack of gratitude for what they've achieved and for where they are is just making those bullets extremely shiny um, and extremely attractive that anything that blips up, it's like, you know, a fucking mozzie to to light or whatever it's just like boom like straight there and so um you know i think i'm pretty passionate i guess about this because um i think it's a it's something you got to keep practicing and we talked about whether you need to go through the experience or whether you can learn off other people's experiences i think it's a combination of both and it depends um but you've got to be open we had the debate about that. Um, I had to go through it, and I guess that's your ego. That's stubbornness. And um, I think different parts of the journey, you, you may need to go into the, the the pain, the pain parts. I mean, again, I know I've said what I've said, where I don't believe you have to, but I mean, that's that's a lot. Of, I mean, that's an idealistic view of the world, right? I think you, we're all going to have areas where we just have to have to suffer that bit more to to turn. You know, and, and make real change in our own discipline because it's really hard to 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 take a discipline from something you read. Otherwise, everyone would be getting it right. You know, yeah, every, everyone's been told at least once to do this or that or or otherwise. Over to you, bro. Yeah. Well, um, look, that's what I just wanted to share. I think we last couple episodes we've had a bit of a theme of of this. Um, turn inwards. Acknowledge acknowledge whatever it is. It's okay. Um, and I think the last few episodes, I think, reinforces that you're not alone. Like, we, we've all gone through Ask it. Ask for help, man. Yeah. yeah. Ask for help. Chuck Norris is probably coming to save you. Yeah, he might. He might. Or Justin Bieber. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you know who's really going to come and save you? Swaggy C. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's going he's to come in his... He'll be in his ship. Was that, was in his, that, yeah, yeah shit, in his own room. In his own room. <laughs> um uh, thanks for sh thanks for sharing lads i think that was the 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 main thing for anyone listening out there um yeah bye see you later <laughs> thanks for listening no <laughs> thanks for listening um 
pass this on to anyone you think this this would help. Hopefully this is helpful. Please share some stories. We've had a couple reach outs. Really appreciate that. Um, it, it helps us a lot. It's why we do this this podcast. You know, sharing these experiences is, is why we do this, um, to encourage uh, people to have the conversations, to, to move forward, um, particularly guys who don't like to share their shortfalls and their failures. Failing is okay. Um, share us, yeah, share with us. We'd love to hear about it. Um, pass it on. Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for sharing. Peace. Ciao.